Narendra Modi and Mahatma Gandhi. These are two Indian names that are very popular around the world, right? But today, here in Switzerland, as I'm standing next to the statue of Gandhi in Geneva, I want to talk about something that might start a little earthquake in the world of YouTube. So today, many in the West use words like fascist, dictator and Nazism when talking about India's Prime Minister or the Modi government, right? But trust me, it is very likely that until today you did not know the real reason they use those kinds of words against Modi. So to find out that reason, please continue watching. Today is October 2nd. India is celebrating Gandhi Jayanti, honoring the man they refer to as the father of the nation. Today in the Western world, quite frequently, Mahatma Gandhi and his values are presented in a positive way. Today, it clearly seems that many experts in the West claim that the great values that Mahatma Gandhi represented are, in a way, totally opposite to the values that Modi represents. And yes, today, in India, leaders who consider themselves liberal, secular and democratic proudly associate themselves with the legacy of Mahatma Gandhi. But did you know that the same Mahatma Gandhi, who is portrayed as a hero by many in the West today, was referred to as the dictator and compared to Hitler? Yes, this may shock you, but back then, in many ways, Mr. Gandhi was portrayed in the same way Modi is portrayed today. But why is it happening? Why do India's so-called enemies behave like that? Well, I will answer that question too, but before that, read this. Prolific English author Beverly Nichols, whose work even influenced Churchill's views, wrote this in his 1944 book, Verdict on India. Read carefully. Gandhi the dictator and the fascist organization which he has created called Congress. Not only that, read this. Congress is the only 100% full-blooded, uncompromising example of undiluted fascism in the modern world. And see what is written here. Congress is fascist in principle. Not only that, it is fascist in practice. It is a Gandhi dictatorship. And please pay attention to this. How India's traditional attire was maligned. The Khadar dhoti and the Gandhi cap are the counterparts of the Nazi shirt and the swastika. And this. The Congress flag, green, yellow and white, is saluted by the Hindus with the same fervor as the swastika was saluted in Germany. And this. The German High Hitler has a striking equivalent in the Indian Gandhiji. As you can see, India's Mahatma Gandhi was compared to Hitler. India's Mahatma Gandhi was compared to other dictators. And today, just like how Western media outlets and authors quote the words or opinions of the so-called Indian liberals to build their case against India's Prime Minister and India, back then, something similar was also done to Gandhi. The book highlights the opinion of the so-called Indian liberal of that era, M. N. Roy. As mentioned here, this is what M. N. Roy wrote of Jawaharlal Nehru, India's number two politician and Gandhi's inevitable successor. Read carefully. Nehru has been acting as the leader of Indian fascism. If Gandhi is the spiritual guide of Congress, Nehru is its effective leader and as such, he is the leader of Indian fascism. Not only that, Mahatma Gandhi was also referred to as a low comedian in this book. And yes, it seems that Mahatma Gandhi was mocked for sacred cows back then in the same way they mock some Hindu leaders for it today. So after reading this, some may ask, why there was propaganda against Mahatma Gandhi and why there is so much propaganda against Modi today? Well, would it be right to say that the real target is not Modi and Gandhi, but something else? So, who is the real target? Let's try to understand this. Back then, as mentioned here, Mahatma Gandhi was perceived as a spiritual and political leader of the Hindus. So, is it right to say that because Mahatma Gandhi was the face of Hindus, for many, he was an enemy? And now, perhaps, to many, Modi is the enemy because he is perceived as the leader of Hindus. And yes, by the way, as explained here, Mahatma Gandhi was also described as the most dangerous enemy of Muslims. Back then, Mahatma Gandhi was referred to as a dictator and today many call Modi a dictator. Tomorrow it will be somebody else. Whoever becomes the face of India's Hindus is likely to meet the same fate. But can their propaganda kill the truth? Well, the truth is that it is the West that is the mother of fascism and Nazism. The truth is that many Indians came to Europe during World War II to fight Nazism and fascism, which were products of Western civilization, and in that process, many from India sacrificed their lives to save the people in the West from their own Nazism and fascism. 
The truth is that it is these so-called liberal Western democracies that have failed to punish thousands of real Nazi war criminals and have instead sheltered them. The truth is that neo-Nazism is still alive in the so-called liberal Western democracies. The truth is that numerous war criminals and Nazis made countries like Canada and the USA their home sweet home. For example, can the global community forget how America became a safe haven for Hitler's men? As observed here, the CIA covertly allowed top Nazi scientists and political operatives to enter the United States. I mean, can we forget the Operation Paperclip? A former Nazi launched America's space program, can we forget that? I mean, for many Americans, he is a hero. The world should never forget that most Nazis escaped justice. As observed here, in her book, Professor Fulbrook says that of the 140,000 individuals brought to court between 1946 and 2005, only 6,656 ended in convictions. According to the renowned Nazi hunter Ram Bam, there are still about 8,000 European war criminals with blood on their hands in the US, the same number in Canada, about 1,000 each in the UK and Australia, along with pockets in Eastern Europe and South America. These people collaborated with the Nazis and facilitated in the murder of Jews. So yes, for a neutral observer, it seems clear that it is not about Modi or Mahatma Gandhi. It is more about their hatred of Hindus and Hinduism. Now, let's pay attention to the observations of the author Meher Boss. Take a look at this. Hindus were a foul race. Who said these words? Read his name here. And yes, as mentioned here, Churchill recommended the book Verdict on India to his wife and wrote, I think you do well to read it. It certainly shows the Hindu in his true character. As observed here, for more than 200 years, hatred of Hindus was the default position of many influential people in Britain. The man who set this agenda was James Mill. The Hindus, Mills wrote, are full of dissimulation and falsehood. Mills also added, In truth, the Hindu, like the eunuch, excels in the qualities of a slave. As mentioned here, Macaulay said, In no part of the world has a religion ever existed more unfavorable to the moral and intellectual health of our race. According to the author Meher Boss, after the revolt of 1857, there were calls to eradicate Hinduism. Yes, just like you hear the eradication of Sanatan Dharma today, back then there were calls to eradicate Hinduism. As described here, the Baptist preacher Charles Spurgeon told a congregation of 25,000 at Crystal Palace that such a religion as the religion of the Hindu, the Indian government were bound, as in the sight of God, to put down with all the strength of their hand. And as observed here, even after the British had left India, Hindu phobia persisted. And if you want to understand how the ongoing hatred of Hindus and Hinduism looks like in the West, then please watch this video. Highly, highly recommend it. Today, the media sharks of the Western colonial criminal states are busy assassinating the character of Indian leaders or maligning India's image by exaggerating or misinterpreting historical truths and realities. My career on YouTube shows that I do not like to make videos on India's domestic politics or political parties, but as a matter of two Indian citizens, I just couldn't bear it anymore. The Western media sharks, whose countries have the legacy of actual Nazism, quite deceitfully try to defame India or malign Bharat's image by cunningly associating it with Nazism in a way that is not appropriate. Remember, even if India's enemies continue to spread hatred, we should not stop spreading love. See you again 